It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. You boy, what day is it today? Oh man, Special K just found out that even though Zeus McFly is no longer the Triple Crown Champion, uh, he still has to face him today, and it's in a false count anywhere match now? Oh man, he's so pissed. Check this out. Oh man. Where? Uh, yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay. Get out of my room! Hey, 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 bud. Uh, how, how much of that did you did you see? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have the sound of death metal, and that can only mean one thing. <laughs> Zeus McFly. I, I believe uh, uh, not not his usual cheery self, but this is post uh, losing the VCW Triple Crown that he worked for oh geez eight years to get, and losing it uh, pretty short into his reign. We'll talk more about that later. Good vibes is something Zeus McFly probably could use today. Wow, so so depressed he can't take his own glasses off. Of course, this is the opening match here at the 2009 VCW Canada Day Massacre. And uh, these two, I think this is kind of a relaxed rules match. Uh, maybe to try and get Zeus McFly's uh, his mojo flowing. His mojo flowing. Uh, I believe uh, right before this match, uh, Special K may or may not have been overheard. Uh, saying some pretty derogatory words about Zeus McFly and uh, reacting in a not-so-positive manner to the fact that he has to wrestle him today. But uh, we'll see how this goes. This one of the matches you would typically see Zeus McFly stomping his feet around, waving his arms in the air, trying to get the fans into the match. But as we've clearly discussed already, Zeus McFly is in a... A poor state of mind. Yeah, right now. now and replace all that with sighing and moping and just uh Yeah, he might say he's in a funk. What is he even doing?
that was interesting. Usually when you see two guys grab chairs and, you know, gonna go at each other with, or even just use it to set up and trade, they do it in a, you know, with a little more rage. A little the, more gumption. This is just very casual, like, alright, let's grab some chairs and have a chit-chat. Maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe they're gonna sit down and have a talk about, Let's uh, face-to-face -face talk? Maybe, uh, some counseling. The problem is who is counseling who in this case. No one seems to want to take the lead. Between the wrestlers and us, there's a lot of dead air going on right now. Oh, oh and there's a tie-up. Tie Finally, some action. They, I think they realize that's what people came to see, and that's what they're supposed yeah. to do in this situation. They took a little bit of coaxing. Yeah. To get uh, a little fight. bit of counseling that we mentioned. Yep. Just a different kind of counseling. Mm -hmm. Some physical therapy. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Not a counter you tend to see. Oh, top wrist lock. Seated top wrist lock. <laughs> oh. Oh, this is going to end bad. <laughs> Either in a broken chair or a broken neck. Kids, don't play around in chairs. Tipping them over. Lean them back in them when you're at your desk. No matter what Michael Chiklis does to you from behind. That's a bad idea. These guys had a bit of a stalemate in this sort of seated chain wrestling, for lack of a better description. Kay taking the advantage with that front face lock. Fly. Oh, can we see a suplex? No. Back to that uh, wrist lock. Arm ringer. Both. Headlock. I've got a leg cradle there. Whoa! Oh. oh, maybe trying to suplex or counter out. Regardless, he didn't get it. It's difficult to get any kind of leverage from a seated position. Yes, it really is. Even if your opponent is also seated. Now here's oh! The, oh! That's more what we're accustomed to, seeing this find a chair. Yeah, just throwing sitting punches. down and punching guys in the face. You know, you think after all these years, guys just would refuse sitting down. I wouldn't sit down with the guy. Oh! oh. Not with punches like that. Wow, those Bob Barker jabs. Oh! oh. Take him in right out of the... Oh! oh! And that's, that is what you need to do. If you're going to get, you know, a bunch of shots to the face, you just need to return the favor. That's the only way to deal with Zeus McFly. Oh, oh, speaking of punches, Dingerplex may or may not be uh, below the belt. Uh, World-class maneuver from Zeus McFly. Yeah, it's a bit of a, uh, a gray area. <laughs> World-classless maneuver, if you ask me. Oh. Nice, Exploder Suplex by Special K. Don't really see him use that one so much, but he does whip out the odd suplex. Taking a page out of Taz's book. Oh, oh. nice. Lucha Slam into the Virtual Fighter. That's a nice little combo McFly. Is he going for the... Fr for the abdominal Abdominizer? driver, the abdominizer, yeah. A little early for oh. that. Oh, hip toss counter to a power bomb. Oh, oh. thunderfire hey, power bomb. Shades of Atsushi Onita. Somewhere Onita smiles while wearing a half falling off bandage on his head. Yes, and pointing and screaming and pouring water all over himself. With wild thing blasting in the background. Really, Special K is the Onita of ECW. Yes. If it comes down to it. There's no other way to compare him. Oh, that's... Is this McFly the on, the Pogo, the, the special case Onita? I was going to say, it was either the Pogo or the or the Godo, but uh, regardless... Perhaps the Pogo? He's, he's the fat load to special case Onita.
perhaps Goto can one day face his Dan Severn. <laughs> oh, backbreaker and stretching across that knee. You know, for they they have sort of the relaxed rules in this match, but uh, I'm shocked we haven't seen McFly. Well, I guess he hasn't been able to break free and go for uh, some weapons or, you know, something he's more known to use. Wow, headbutts to the abdominal section. That's that's pretty smart, actually. Yeah. With the prone abdominals. Like that. Why not? Take oh, of your there's the relaxed oh. rules right there. He's going for the nose. He's got the nose. Oh. I don't think he's going to give it back either. Nope. That's definitely going in the pocket. Might go in his mouth. Oh. Can swirl it around. You know. Oh, no. You know how that trick goes. Spit it back out. <laughs> Do I know how that trick goes? I don't know. You steal someone's thumb or their nose, put it in your mouth. Mm -hmm -hmm. You know? Am I the only one who ever did that? I guess I am. You a weird childhood, my friend. Ah, you don't know me. Regardless, still somewhat surprising in a relaxed rules match. McFly keeping it in the ring and pretty orthodox, all things considered. Oh. Oh, elbowing out of that headlock. Off the ropes we go. Oh, nice tackle. Drop down. Leapfrog. Another one. Line leapfrog. Another one. No. Oh, Frankenstein. Frankenstein are really nice, actually. Oh, kicks out. Almost takes out the ref in the process. Oh. Oh, nice heel cut off. Can you say that on TV? I don't know if I can, but I just did, so deal with it. That's what the move's called. He uses his heel to cut him off, right? He just cuts across with his heel first. Sure, we'll go with that. All right. I didn't say that. Don't know if you heard. Who that. said that? Who said that? That wasn't me. Back to the action, folks. Yeah, the vaunted Supergirls Wrestling Arena. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, a bit of a pet name for the arena. I've never, uh, never really heard it referred to as that, but uh, nice knee drop for, by Cave. Only gets two though. That's the thing about Zeus McFly. He's a tough guy. Maybe the toughest guy in VCW for all for all I know. Uh, it takes a lot to put him away. I don't think you're putting him away with a knee drop. Certainly not to the face. He can't feel his face, anyways. No, he's. Like Bobcat Goldthwait in that scene in Blow. Oh, Darkness Buster. Had a powerbomb attempt by McFly. Now we might be seeing some of those bigger moves. Oh, Dominizer. Nope. Got the leg hooked. Just got the head hooked. Oh, K wrestling. Oh, down. wrestling. Oh. <laughs> countered up to rear waist lock. State roll countered. Oh. Big one footed drop one -footed kick. One footed drop kick puts McFly on the back of his head. Like Fly is showing that ring veteranship with the feet on the ropes. Classic McFly, really. Classic McFly, really? I don't know about that. Eh. Just roll with it. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> as classic as I was, ca classic. Yeah, was okay. that classic special K? Because I don't think it was. I think that chair broke into shards that went into McFly's eyes. He may be blind. Wow. Bleeding Eyes McFly? Bleeding Eyes McFly. What a thing to do. There, There's the relaxed rules. You're having a nice nice little match. It's relaxed rules, but you're wrestling your match, Special K. Ah, forget it. Let's just smash him with a chair in the face. What a dick move. Bring Buster onto an open... Pla that's not <laughs> even a lawn chair. That's not a folding chair. That's a uh, patio chair. You're not supposed to do moves onto those. I mean, I guess you're not supposed to do moves onto chairs in, peer in general, oh. but... Uh-oh. Oh, McFly's got something cooking here. Could we see a, do a dive? Oh! oh! Wow. Well, that chair has uh, seen better days. It has, and so has Special K. Oh! Two to not only is it a relaxed rule, I guess it's false count anywhere. 
Well, they, they don't tell us anything around here. No, we, we never got the notes for this match. I'm, I'm okay with that, though. I think, uh, I mean, that's certainly going to benefit McFly, especially if they keep this out here. Absolutely. Oh, oh, rams him right into the wall. That is a hard wall, too. That was a mean kick to the stomach by McFly. Just lacing the boots right into him. Tommy. <laughs> McFly's bleeding. I don't know if you noticed that. that I'm going to guess that's from the chair shot. Oh my god, bleeding. It's not bleeding that bad. Uh -oh. Someone's proclaimed to have a dirty butt. <laughs> oh! oh. Special K getting very well acquainted with that wall. Uh, yeah, he's becoming best friends with that. <sighs> Can he, can he get to third base now? That's the second date. <laughs> you get best are you best friends with someone by the second date and then go to third base with them? Yeah, isn't that how it works? <laughs> this is an interesting relationship. That garage door may be broken and never coming back down. <laughs> oh. Mr. Fly uses black magic to keep the door from plumbing down and sealing everybody in the building. Well, that's good. That's good. That's uh, that's effective use of that every black magic. While, every once in a while, Zeus McFly can be quite the humanitarian. Yeah, no, he's, he's good for uh, th for the odd uh, thing like that. We're going out on to the street. Oh, there's a dumpster out there. Taking it to the street. Oh. oh. Chop. Punch. 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 And oh, my God. Going for a big old kick or something? Oh! Oh, drop toehold. I thought something much worse was going to occur. <laughs> there, there was a great potential for for scary things happening uh -oh. there. Although, you know what? Being on a super safe dumpster in the middle of an industrial park is still kind of scary. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, where are we going to... Oh, oh, my God. That was something. Oh. Oh. K not wanting any part of what McFly has planned for him. Wow. Oh. Oh. No. Oh, it's that Indian Deathlock 420 pile driver. Is he going to hit it? Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, into a pin. Changes it into like an Indian Deathlock sunset flip. Don't see that very often. Doesn't get the job done, but it was nice. It was nice. Uh, it was a unique maneuver. You don't see that ever. Oh. Ooh. Running rough shot on Special K here. K definitely out of his element here. Absolutely out of his element. And and while he's still recovering and going to get his way back to the ring, I I can only imagine when Zeus McFly is preparing for him back in the ring. At, at least he can get back to the ring, or he's trying to. He, he's he's definitely trying, although. Oh, he may just very well be out on his feet after that Indian Deathlock power driver. What on earth is pin. the referee doing? He's not doing his job. That's he was he was being a cheerleader. He was or trying was, to. Or was he cheer walking the dinosaur? Him. Or <laughs> may have been walking the dinosaur. Okay, still struggling to to stay on his feet to get back into the ring. All the while, Zeus McFly is throwing all kinds of tables and chairs and. That's about it, really. Tables and, and chairs. And broken boards into the ring. Oh! oh! What a mean thing to do someone. Jab them with a the chair in the hand. I suppose since the r rules are relaxed, you can go with some small joint manipulation. Uh, well, it's not really... It's like the foot stomps, you know? It's kind of a dick thing to do, but it's, it's so, legal. So that gray area? It's a gray thing, yes, but it's legal. Just like in this relaxed rules match, and we've got a modified table here. It's a board, bridge between two chairs. It's VCW. We don't have much of a budget. Get used to it. It works. It's hey, it's gonna work. It's gonna serve McFly's purpose, right? VCW, we blew all our budget on fun. <laughs> well put. Oh, Yaksa J. I mean, <laughs> it's not in this match, but Yaksa, Yaksa K is. 
And by that I mean he acts a kick by Special K, kicking that board into McFly, who I guess was setting things up. He was on the wrong side of it. I don't know he what he was thinking. He never saw it coming. Definitely, <laughs> literally did not see it coming. Hmm. Huh. K seems to have a plan. Uh oh. Oh. Seeing the fruits of McFly's labor with that table. They're gonna use it oh. against him. That may be the only way he's oh. gonna beat McFly is by out McFlying McFly in this type of match. K is just. I mean, he's. That's a good way to start. Start punching him in the face. He's gonna punch you in the face. Yeah, that's true. And preemptive uh, punchings. In uh, the face. pile driver or power ball? Power ball? That would be a hell of a thing. Oh. oh. Maybe not today. No. McFly thinks otherwise. Back away, not today, Special K. We got Zeus McFly fighting back, but Special K is not giving up yet. Oh, throwing punches still. Uh oh. Something's got to give here. Oh! oh! Hurricane Rana on that board doesn't break and drives K's head first. That might be it. Two and no! Two and a half, two and three quarters, call it what you will, but one thing you can't call it is a victory. You sure that's regulation plywood? I I believe so. Or particle board perhaps? I'm not I'm not sh No, it's not a uh, it's not a song by They Might Be Giants, but it was effective, but Special K manages to survive. There is that other piece you of You know board. who may be a giant? Special K if you can survive this fight. He's sure, sure showing some giant determination and some giant perseverance. But they may all come to a crashing halt if McFly can pull off his powerbomb through this makeshift board McFly table. McFly has oh. a nice powerbomb. If he can do it into that board. Oh, maybe a brain buster. K has a nice brain buster. Oh, up and over. Over the board. Oh. No. Oh, oh. oh, oh. Whoa. Wow. That was like the John Cena of abdominizers through that board. Oh. It was like half abdominizer, half protoplex. Broke the board. Didn't get the victory. No. I, I don't know what's going to take. Perhaps a bowl of rice. Perhaps a bowl of rice, although neither men, not really. Uh, rice eaters. Not no. really, no. Can we see a trailer park destroyer? Doesn't really hit that move all that much anymore. Oh, and there you go. Today will not be the day that he hits it either. Nope. K's got something, though. Oh, headbutt. headbutt. Darkness. darkness. Tornado, Tornado darkness. darkness. No. Just rolls through into oh, the darkness, darkness buster. That might be it. One, two, oh. oh. Only two. These guys have been whipping out the heavy artillery, hitting some big moves, and, and nothing seems to be getting the trick done. Like I said, I, I think he needs to out McFly McFly. He needs to find something that hasn't been used. Find a bigger table, or a harder table, or a table covered in things you wouldn't want to get thrown onto. A tabler table. A yes. chair or chair. Exactly. Or, or, or a what? box a full of sharp objects. What? Song by the used? Uh, uh, it's a song by the used. We can agree on that. <laughs> it's only a box full of objects. Oh, Tupperware container full. Of okay, it's of metal. Obviously, it's not thumbtacks. It's not. Oh, what? Are those nuts and bolts? I think those are nuts and bolts. That's just utility nuts and bolts underneath a wrestling ring. Wrestling rings have that kind of stuff, and that's just hard, jagged metal. Those are nuts and bolts. I, I can honestly say I've never seen that in a wrestling match. In an attempt to undo the machine that is Zeus McFly. Wow. That was a, a thimble in there. That's, uh... Wow, he's going to brain buster on him. That is what? gross. What? That can't be good for anybody. Oh, knee oh. to the head. No, power, power bomb. bomb. I'm making a bold statement. First guy to throw the other guy into nuts and bolts, probably going to win this match. Is it a bolt statement? It's a bolt statement, in fact. Oh, oh. counters out of the power bomb. Death Valley Driver. Oh! Right wow. on the hardware. Two and three. three. Special K uses that Death Valley Driver. Shades of Itsuko Mita holds on for that clutch and just drives him head and neck first into that pile of bolts. And what did I say? He out Zeus McFly, Zeus McFly. What a great victory for Special K. Absolutely. He uh, used the hardware to bring home the hardware in terms of the victory. And another a great way to start off this year's Canada Massacre. As always.
wrestling. It's not because I am fucking coming for you. I don't care if it's tomorrow, next week, fucking whenever. I'm coming. When I come, it ain't gonna be pretty. Oh, it ain't gonna be fast. I'm gonna make it fucking slow, painful, and I'm gonna take those belts and fucking ride them all the way to that sunset. So just say You better fucking prepare, baby. Because here I come. That's right. Here I come. <laughs> this is a scene. Fan in the audience who may or may not be Special K. <laughs> oh, oh, no time for intros. Drew Saren going to the action there right away. This is your VCW Triple Crown title match here at the 10th annual Canada Day Massacre, July 5th, 2009. We hope you enjoyed the first match. Here we are with match number Oh, what a counter by Yakuza J. I have never seen that counter before. Counters a wheelbarrow attempt with a knee, a, a dubiously low knee, but I'm not going to say anything because it was so good. Followed by a beautiful German suplex, sends Drew Sarian right out of the ring. Drew Sarian, of course, a mere one week removed from his first ever VCW Triple Crown title win over Zeus McFly, which he won under uh, somewhat questionable circumstances, using the title belt to, uh, to defeat Zeus McFly, of course, in a legal maneuver, but the ref did not see it. Drew Sarian, uh, often a fan favorite, uh, no longer... After after that action, and Drew Sarian apparently uh, not phased by the fact he's no longer a fan favorite. He is the world title. He's the VCW Triple Crown champion, and that's all that matters to him right now. Well, apparently that and the all-you-can-eat buffet at Uncle Willie's. <laughs> Get I bet that's where Drew Sarian spent his, his uh, title-winning money. On immediately after winning the champions. The I believe the champions purse did go directly to our good friend Uncle Willie. <laughs> and this is a hell of a first title defense for Drew Sarian taking on Yakuza J, multi-time champion, size advantage, experience advantage. Could be a very short reign for oh. Drew Sarian, especially getting punched that hard Laying about the, the stomach and face. Those body shots, are, you can hear them from a mile away. And finish the finish the deal with a face shot. Sarian off the ropes, gets leveled with a back elbow. Yakuza J not messing around. Yakuza J has not been champion for two years in VCW. Obviously aiming to change that. Using that huge size advantage of his that he has on almost everyone on the roster. Yakuza J coming off a, coming off a brief Canadian title reign back in April of 2009. Winning it in a tag match by pinning Special K and uh, losing in a big upset actually the next week to uh, to Mitch Deppen, which was Mitch Deppen's first ever title win in VCW. So VCW not a stranger to one week title reigns, and that may be the case again. Although Drew Sarian now has finally found a way to get an advantage over the big man by taking out the leg, drapes it over the bottom rope. And brings his weight down on it, bending the knee in an awkward position. Yaxa J, of course, has had double knee surgery back in 2007. I don't know if those knees will ever be 100% again. Why is it turning 
Certainly never not the way that Bruce Arian keeps wailing on them with using all of his body weight as he did before, and just dropping right in the right knee now. at Ooh. an incredibly unnatural angle. He actually, as a result of that surgery, of course, was out of action from BY Week 2007. His, uh, his last match was September 1st, 2007. Wasn't back in BCW until uh, one year prior to this, actually. He was back uh, Canada Day 2008 to reprise his team with Scott Henson. So he was out for uh, he was out for a good ten months almost. Of course, ever since then has been back with a vengeance. Had a great deal of success in BCW, many top tier matches, one title reign. Looking for another title reign right now. But Drew Sarian just relentless on that knee. A new side of Drew Sarian. One we're not keen. Uh, well, not. Used to seeing, I was. I meant to say, I. I said not keen to see. I'm not keen to see it though. I don't like seeing this side of Drusarian. Well, the fans certainly don't like seeing the side of this, this side of Drusarian. Don't like much seeing the front side of Drusarian either. No, everyone could do without that. Sarian purely out for himself. Discover that playing to the fans was doing him no good. Although I, I disagree with that sentiment. It, uh, it got him a somewhat lengthy Canadian title run from uh, just in in only the past six months. Had it from uh, I believe November 2008 until uh, until versus the World Six back in uh, February March of 2009. And he did not have to resort to any underhanded tactics to win that title or retain that title in several defenses. Had a very good one. Uh, had a ladder match against Daniel Maccabe. Kept the fans on his side that way. But now, I guess it, in order to win the big one, he feels that he has to forsake the fans, basically. Do whatever he can. Lie, cheat, steal the whole nine yards in order to A, win the title, and B, retain the title. Yeah, because Jay Lane is huge. Punishing shot. Drew Sarian for his sins. Oh! That body shot again. Another big body shot by Yakuza J. Drew Sarian in a bad way. Gets him into the corner. Comes in. Oh, goes for a spear in the corner. Moves. J could be back with the advantage here. Big overhead. Belly to belly. Suplex. Sends Sarian flying. Jay's knee is still bothering him, though. Haven't and not I'm gotten up quite yet after that not surprised play. in the least by that. But Jay may at least have bought himself time trying to trying to pummel that knee back into perhaps regain feeling in it. Rivers count is at six. Looks like they will be getting up before the ten count. Sarian's up. Yeah, because Jay on one knee. Now he's up to his feet. Not at 100 percent though. Oh, you wouldn't tell by that shot, though. Oh, and then a kick by Sarian. Oh, right back to the knee of Sarian. Ooh. And he's actually laying in the hard body shots. But Sarian has that secret weapon he can go to time and time again, that weakened leg. I demand satisfaction. Jay can barely, can barely stand on it. Oh, but how about that Vader attack? Vertical splash, as they call it. Takes him out. Fans love it. Now kill him. Fans calling for blood. They feel betrayed by Sarian, rightly so. Sarian, who they have cheered for for literally years. And in one fell swoop last week, cheated deviously against Zeus McFly in order to end Zeus McFly's first title reign. Zeus McFly, a sympathetic favorite. Shoulder block by X, it takes him down. Sarian's slow to get up, and you would be too if you got hit by 290 plus pounds. And again. Jay trying to shake that knee out. Not gonna come off the ropes. Not too fast, obviously. Oh, goes for the splash again! Gets caught with a stunner by Drew Sarian. Drew Sarian has won matches with that before. Two count only. I 
The stunner absolutely jarring. He goes to Jay's chin. The oh. only thing worse would be if he gave his leg a stunner. Ooh. I hope he didn't hear me. I hope he doesn't take that advice. For Yakuza Jay's sake, I hope he didn't hear that. Sarian looking for that pump and I know for the pump handle power bomb, that ultimate Sarian bomb as he calls it. But that is a, a bit of a tall order for Sarian here. Or at least a fat order. <laughs> Yakuza Jay hip toss him out. Huge kick in the back! That is an equalizer. Oh, He's like, obviously still bothering him. But. Perhaps, perhaps the XJ looking to just <laughs> kick him in the back and leave on a high note. But no, wasn't that going to the far corner to scale the top rope? Unusual, if not unprecedented, for Yakuza J. What could he even be thinking here? This may be too much risk, not enough reward. Sarian slow to his feet. What was that tackle of his? Jay's on the top rope. Oh, for a top rope shoulder tackle, but Sarian spears him out of midair. Can you believe it? Sarian suckered him in. Playing possum. I think he caught Jay's leg underneath him and just drove him right over that knee. Uh, Jay's leg has got to be destroyed by that two count and... Oh, oh. Two, two count only. Jay am amazingly able to kick out. Fans getting behind Yakuza Jay. Not the most advisable move. Hope, hoping that Yakuza Jay gets behind Drew Sarian and fucks him in the ass. <laughs> A prime candidate for some bro rape. Right <laughs> Sarian throwing those soup bones, perhaps not with all the power that Yakuza J was throwing body shots earlier in the match, but Sarian doing all he can, just throwing fast strikes and another big one. Jay goes down. Sarian off the ropes. Oh, oh, big hip attack to the head in the corner. Jay does not know where he is right now. Smashing into the cranium of Yakuza Jay. Crowd getting into it. They want to see it. They want to see a title change. On traditionally, VCW's biggest show of the year. Oh, feet on the ropes. Referee, you got to catch that. And it looked like he did just in time. Candidate Massacre, as I was saying, traditionally VCW's biggest show of the year. What better than a Triple Crown title change on it? We've seen it before. I think we've seen it before. Surely we have. There have been ten of them. I can't believe there hasn't been a title change on one of them. Let's say there have. I can't think of one offhand. But oh, sure, though. The year before. One year before there was one. Let's go with that. With Special K defeating Daniel Makabe. Can we see it again? Oh. Sarian gets his super kick caught. Again, big body shot by Yakuza J. Might have been a little Throws a line. That one, but. Oh! Holy cow! Sarian goes face first into the ropes. Comes back blind and gets destroyed with an axe bomber to the back of the head. Yakuza J perhaps calling for another one now. This one could be to the more traditional front. Whoa, Nelly. On that axe bomber to the Perhaps back the, the, the People's Liberation front. Jay off the ropes. Oh! oh! Sarian pulls the referee in front of him. Another cheap ploy by Sarian. That dastardly drew Sarian. Dastardly Drew. Sarian goes right to the belt. This is how he won the title one week prior. He actually misses the belt shot. Sarian, oh! Throws the belt at him and drop kicks the knee out. Oh! oh. And a huge super kick to the side of the head. Sarian beat Henson, beat Scott Henson with that a few weeks prior, just before he won the title. Trying to wake up the referee, but Sarian... Sarian may have... Fucked his own goat here, or a, a phrase that makes more sense. By knocking out the by knocking out the referee, rendering the referee unable to count a pin or submission. But Sarian now with a figure four leg lock on Yakuza J, who may well, regardless of the figure four, may be unconscious. Referee checking the hand. That's two. I fear this could be it. Three. Hand goes down for three. Drew Sarian, a professional son of a bitch, retains the VCW Triple Crown against perennial contender Yakuza J. Knocking out the behemoth in the process. The behemoth and the Leviathan, both land and sea monsters from the Old Testament. How about throwing in 
What's his name? Zix? I think it's Zix, which seems weirdly out of place with the other two names. Regardless, he is the which, air demon. Which I do not recognize as a legitimate demon. That is a lot of hair that he could potentially lose. It is. I can't imagine Scott Henson nah. without the flowing locks. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Uh, both guys have had short-ish haircuts, but uh, well, Daniel McCabe is certainly a lot shorter than Scott Hansen. He has not recently, though, uh, as you can tell, his hair is, well, no, is longer than very long. Yeah, but uh, and that's the name of the game: hair versus hair. These two guys, uh, one of them's losing yeah, losing some locks tonight, and oh, there's that handshake yeah, Daniel McCabe tends to offer. Let's see what I don't Henson. Know why. Does anybody actually buy into that at this point? They have in the past. I don't know I about. Don't I don't know about why. anymore. Henson, what? I don't think he's gonna fall for it. It doesn't make sense. It, with with everything else you do, with all the bullshit you pull, why why are you why are you shaking people's hands at the beginning of a match? Exactly. You want to know the truth, Scott? I want to know the truth. Scott Henson's smart. I shake everyone else's hand because I respect them. Because I want you to shake my hand so I can punch you in the face. Ooh. Whoa. He's honest. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Finally, months of handshaking all explained, and uh, I, I, I can't say I blame the man for. <laughs> no, no. That's, uh, that's different. I can't say uh, a lot of people uh, approach wrestling from that. <laughs> perspective, but uh, whatever works for you. We, uh, like we said, main event of Canada Day. This is a uh, VCW's big show of the year. I guess they're the equivalent of WrestleMania. And uh, we got one of the bigger main events ever. Hair versus hair. First time ever in VCW. Maybe not, but it's it's certainly the most high profile. It's not the first time. It's it's definitely the biggest hair versus hair match. I think our VCW historian is agreeing. Yes, it, it is the is. first. Ah, yes. The others was was a beard versus hair. I, I remember that. Yeah, Scott Henson was involved in that. There was, was a chin hair versus chin hair match. Yes, but this is hair versus hair, and it's starting off with some some technical wrestling. It's interesting. I mean, these guys, even though their hair's on the line and they don't really like each other, uh, I mean, they're still they're not throwing caution to the wind. They're not gonna just come and try and blitz the other guy. You Which know? is smart because oh, you could make a mistake if you do that, and the consequences of making a mistake in this match, unlike another match, are. I mean, crucial to your to your look. Yeah, yeah. Both of these guys might look uh, a little different with some short hair currently, but uh, you know, I, I'm 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 a little surprised. These guys have a history. You'd think maybe uh, one of them's gonna come out, uh, you know, all engines blaring. But uh, no, I mean, th this is smart. This is no, smart. No, I think this is I think this is lo the logical start to this match. Yeah. And, and you know the thing for me that I think is going to be most interesting as this match uh, unfolds, who makes the first mistake? I think the person that makes the first mistake ends up regretting it in the, in the means of their hair later on. Exchanging some headlocks and top wrist locks. Now we got a bit of a oh, right Makabe. I thought he was going for leap rock, but he actually pulled guard. Yeah, he did out of that. Oh, straight into an armbar. That Scott Henson could not have thought that was what was going to come out of that exchange, but he'll oblige with some. 
mat work here. Oh, into an armbar of his own, but Makabe quickly rolls out of it into Henson's guard. If you had to guess, what type of a match do you think Scott Henson would like to have here? One that it sees his power used to his advantage, or do you think that he can work a, a, a match that is maybe focused solely on the ground? Oh, hey, look at that. Well, that's sure not... Be able to do that. that is not cricket. Pulling at the hair. The hair that may not be around much longer. That, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, maybe making a statement there, Dan Makabe. Arm drag by Henson. And another one. Oh, arm drag by Makabe. And another from Henson as they exchange. And another from Makabe. Oh, and that's... And look at Makabe slither away. The snake that he is. That one hurt Henson a little more than those first few, and that's going to kind of bring us to the first... the end of the first stanza here, as it were. Um... Yeah, I don't know what kind of match Henson's gonna, how he's gonna approach this match. Uh, he definitely can go uh, hold for hold, tit for tat with Makabe. He does have the strength advantage. Um, definitely has more of a, maybe an, a more explosive offense is, is a way to put it. You That's know, probably he, accurate. He's yeah. got big moves that he's known to put guys away with. He can hit any of those big moves and really end the match, you know? Um, he has that, I think you've keyed in on a really good point. He's got that big move uh, repertoire that can finish a match out of nowhere. Whereas I think Daniel McCauley requires a little more wearing down to hit that big Maybe more, more wear and tear, likes to wear opponents down, absolutely. I mean, he does have big moves like the Trapper Keeper. He does. He hits those moves off the top, like a Superplex, the Dan Spike. Um, but, you know, his, his, his main move is a submission, right? So, you know, a lot of the times he, is, uh, he likes to pick apart body parts, take a, you know, here's an abdominal stretch, for example. So, uh, th there, that could be the, you know, the varying... Um, game plans or psychology behind this match. Uh, but we'll see. You know, so far it's basically been back and forth. Matt, you know, Matt wrestling, arm drags, pretty, uh, I mean, quite scientific considering what's what's on the line here. And I'm not going to suggest here with my next comment that Scott Henson doesn't have a game plan. Yes. But I do believe that Henson should be careful here in this slowish start to this match. It likely favors Daniel Maccabi, who always seemingly has a game plan like a snake in the grass ready to just spring out whatever it is that he has in store and I think that the slower start leads to whatever Makave has planned. Oh wow quick exchange of ringers and hammer locks, headlock oh look at this whoa one two oh schoolboy and now reversed over and oh. into a cross face almost in a completely seated position is Scott Hansen as well I'm oh go ahead sorry I was just going to say, so a lot more torque now being placed on the neck, or a lot more torque could be placed on the neck than usual. Oh. And an elbow. And oh. a stomp. Stomp to the back. I mentioned Daniel mccabe has got a hold. You know, that's not to take away from Scott Henson, known for using that cross face of Scott. Um, you know, he's good at wearing guys down and, and submitting them as well, so... Yeah, both men very well rounded. The, uh, you know, if you were to sort of grade them, they'd probably be equally graded here. Uh, and not to mention this, the fact that they've wrestled each other so many times. And there is Henson catching Makabe with a cross face. They know each other inside and out. They know each other very well. They've had, you know, many big matches. They've faced each other on, you know, Canada Day shows and, uh, you know, anniversary shows. Uh, you know, in all in title matches, triple crown matches, a a basically every you know kind of match and situation you can find yourself in the rings of ECW. These guys have gone at it, exchanged many you know wins and losses. So with that being said, it, we, we may want to consider the fact that the conclusion of this match, we'll see something we've never seen from either of these two men before. That is very possible, in fact. And look oh. at this step over, and. We're starting to see Henson pull away a little bit. Yeah. He's, you know, maybe his mind is just a little bit sharper on this day, and he's seeing Makabe's moves a few steps ahead, countering them, wearing him down with submissions, pull, you know, pulling uh, a bit of Makabe's own uh, game plan against him. The momentum certainly starting to tilt slightly in favor of Scott Henson here at this point. But that's where I think we'll start to see the... Uh, the ring general of Daniel Maccabe come out and his ability to change his game plan like a good defensive coordinator in football able to change the game plan and stop the quarterback Daniel Maccabe is going to have to take it upon himself now to be his own defensive coordinator and, and stop the attack here of, of Scott Hansen. Adapt basically. Adapt, Adapt. exactly. Yeah. 
Thank you for taking my uh, well thought out and uh, and summarize it with one word. And yes. Summarize it with one word. Exactly yes. what I did. Oh, oh, only a two count. That might be more mental of Scott Henson than anything. I don't think he thought he could finish him there. That's more or less to get into his mo get into the mind of Daniel McCabe, play mind games a little bit. And you know, you just got to keep guys on their toes. You go for those pinfalls because if they're you know they're not thinking about it, they can get pinned. Exactly. Oh, we went for that. John Woo countered. Can we have a Boston Crab here? No. Oh, slingshot. Oh, oh right into the corner. John and Walters. Oh. oh, look at that. The torque of the neck and then the impact of the knees on the back. Cover one, two, and a kick out by Makabe and maybe Henson could have had three, but the referee slightly out of position, a little slow to, to make the, the count. And Henson going right back to the grinding, holding him down. He's got that, oh, he had that arm. No, he's got it, yeah. Uh, Makabe's left arm, he's got it scissored. Are you, are you it's almost like the crossface of Scott from just a weird position. I don't know if it's doing the same kind of damage. Back to the hair is Daniel Makabe. And, and and as much as we uh, have said, you know, things are mind games, you know, I, I think that is, uh, you know, making point of the fact that it is a hair versus hair match, but uh, it's also just to get out of the hole, too, you know? Henson back up to his feet and just boots the back right between the shoulder blades of Daniel Maccabi now. Sends him into the ropes. Ducks tried oh. to telegraph that a bit and Maccabi caught him. He almost he was going for that trap keeper there. What is it? Oh, he's going for the Colt 45. Haven't seen that in a while. Oh. Oh, look at that. Roll up. Into Henson's own crossface of Scott. Look at the positioning though. Henson very close to the ropes. And oh. then he gets right to the ropes. Makabe was looking for that Makabe lock, that bridging cattle mutilation hold. And you're you're right, Henson was close to the ropes and but is this enough? Is this the you know the the first mistake, the first change of momentum that we were talking about? Oh, Tables are starting to turn a little bit. Makabe looks like he's going for the sternum, trying to knock the wind out of Scott Henson. Could be looking to knock the wind out of him. Could be looking to work for that Makabe lock. He does do that trapper keeper, yep. which, yeah, it's a pile driver, but you know, you're you're driven head first down into the mat. That's a lot of pressure coming down on those shoulders. Just it it sort of reverberates through your vertebrae. But up onto the shoulders. Oh, he ducked out of it and drops a. Oh. Was that a, more of his a whole back rather than just the elbow? No, it was a sent on. That was definitely a, the back splash. Across Henson's back. Only a two count, though. The left shoulder of Scott Henson getting up just before the three count. Nah, 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 nah. Well, you can hear Scott Henson. He's audibly in pain there, grunting. I wonder if he has sustained maybe a, a rib cage injury. Those elbows and the stops to the to the ribs earlier, to the chest. Oh, oh. fist now, drop to the neck. <laughs> Targeting in on the neck and shoulder region. Oh, he pulled him up by the hair. What? You know, we saw some relative sportsmanship and clean wrestling. And now Daniel Maccabe taunting Scott Henson. Picking him up by the hair. And now what's he going to do? Into the ropes. Reverse. Reverses the Irish whip. Maccabi in, Henson ducks, catches him, oh. blue thunder, one, two, that could be, no, oh. whoa, what a reversal. Maccabi rolls out of that pinfall and into a head scissors. And excellent positioning as well, his body positioning along with ring positioning, keeping Henson away from the ropes. Yeah, he's between the ropes and Henson, oh, H Henson manages to get a foot over to get to the ropes. The only thing out of that move that prevented Maccabi possibly from winning was the fact that the the his body weight was not shifted as such that it allowed Henson to get up and roll himself towards the ropes. That was the only thing there. That was a dangerous position for Henson to be in. Oh. Backslide. Two. Oh, kicks out back into that crossface of Scott. We saw exchange of forearms there. Maccabi went back to sort of his uh, some old uh, habits of his. Used to be known for uh, flying arm drags and that sort of thing, but uh, 
Henson saw it coming and managed to reverse to the backslide and, and then into the, oh, seated drop kick into the cross face, but Makabe got out and it's back on top of Henson. Into a cover, one, two. Seeing if that drop kick was enough to get a three count, it wasn't. It, we're starting to see a real game plan developing here between both men. Both men seem to be targeting the neck and the shoulder region. Henson repeatedly going back to the cross face. You can see Makabe has been working the upper body. Good positioning here. You can see Scott Henson moving his body towards the bottom rope. And, and you know that's smart. Makabe sees Henson's moving. He's close to getting the rope break. He just lets go of the hold so he can remain on top of the man. Exactly. And, and keep doing his damage, keep doing the work that he's been putting in, trying to wear down Scott Henson. Maintain control. We have really yet to see either man make a, a, a mistake here. No really crucial ones. We've seen two kind of distinct periods of one man having control. Yep. Those have been more or less a, a result of reversals rather than of a, a one competitor making a mistake over the other. Or mistiming a, a move. Henson breaks up that attempt and oh, big knife edge chop in the hard corner. Hard chop. And as that chop echoed through the building here. And now an Irish whip into the corner. Henson follows up, takes a boot to the kisser. Maccabe to the middle rope. And oh. into a tornado DDT, it, it looked like. And now, uh, is he looking for possibly a trapper keeper here? I think German suplex. German suplex, you're right. Oh, over, he hits up it. and over, and the impact. Henson's head colliding with the canvas, his neck and, and his neck shoulders. Exactly. And now a two count. I like the cover attempt there from, from Makabe. He put the lateral press right across the his body using all his his weight to go for the possible pinning combination there. And that was after hitting that tornado DT and German suplex. That's one thing I'll say about Makabe is, you know, a lot of the moves that he chooses to use, they all focus in on that, you know, that ultimate goal of, you know, submitting guys or pinning them with that high impact trapper keeper or, you know, something along those lines. And that was really the first time we've saw, what? Uh oh, up to the shoulders. Makabe could be in trouble. Nope, works his way out of it. John Woo into the, and slamming Scott Henson into the corner. Following up. Oh, oh my goodness, what a boot scrape across the face. I was just going to say that the, the Tornado DDT in German Suplex, the first real back-to-back high-impact moves we've seen in this match, the first real combination we've seen. That might be enough too. And no, not enough. Henson, still enough heart to kick out. Makabe, that one thing we uh, we haven't discussed, and not just Makabe, but you know this will affect both guys, is we're talking... You know, 4th of July weekend, it's hot out. These guys are going at a pretty good pace here, really grinding on each other. Yep. I mean, stamina, I, I think, will be an issue. You know, it, the, the weather combined with, you know, the high stakes, the fact that these guys are, are really going to pull out all the stops. And, you know, who's going to run out of the gas first? Is that going to be uh, a and big that, factor? That's an excellent point because on the surface, I don't think you could really judge which man has the advantage. I, I, You know, it's pretty similar, I would say, just judging from experience of calling their matches. I think they're both pretty similar in the stamina department. Nice little soul kick there from Scott Henson. Oh, but Makabe, similar kick of his own to break it up. Oh! That was that was like a game of cat and mouse, you know, one guy seeing what was coming next and Makabe saw that Lariat coming. Henson caught him. Oh, but Makabe saw that lock. promotion coming. Yeah. Oh, he almost had the Makabe lock in the ring. Henson reverses it. Lifts him up. Oh. Reversed by Makabe. Makabe's caught him. Looked like he was going for a back suplex there. Up and over, onto his feet. And oh. what a kick, right to the back of the head. If you can't deliver a move, why not just go right back to the strikes, a kick to the back of the head. Oh, triangle enziguri. Oh, Henson finally, he caught him in midair and hit that Frosian out of nowhere, that, that same Frosian he was going for two or three times in that exchange. An ugly looking landing for Daniel Makabe, whose head was driven into the canvas. Well, I mean, that's the thing, that triangle enziguri, it's basically a flying somersault kick to the back of your opponent's head but you with the somersault you roll out you take your own your landing you know and Henson caught him in midair and drove him down into the mat you know that that's going to be an ugly landing no matter how you think about it 
Both men back to their feet. Perhaps an exchange of strikes here. You can start to see, you talked about the stamina earlier. Starting to wear a little bit on both these men, taking big deep breaths in between these strikes. And I think that's, you know, you can attribute that to the weather, you can attribute that to the pace, but you can also attribute that to the fact that we're starting to see some bigger moves hit now. And we're starting to see them to take a lot more damage and, and punishment and, and take more risks, perhaps. A couple of reversals here. Backslide attempt. Has him. One. Two. Oh, just rolling out was Makabe. Oh. Now he into a pinning. Only a two count. This will, I can start to see this one quickening up here. Two count. Oh, Jack Bridge over top. One, two. Reversal. One, two. Both men slowing a little bit. Henson rolled over onto his stomach. Makabe rolling through. Two count. Henson, look at him spring up to his feet. Big up and flip. over. One. Two! And again, only a two count. Kicking him away from a possible oh. pinning combination and into the corner. Henson with Makabe exhausted from that last exchange. Perched up onto the rope. And that's another thing. I don't know if people at home realize, but you know, going for those quick pinfalls back and forth, those take a lot out of you because not only are you worrying about you know countering and, and getting out of the hole, but then what your next move is. And, and just the movement is so quick that that, you know, it seems like a little yeah. thing, but those can just take the win right out of you. Makabe reversing. Oh, I and think Henson was going for the use on the world, which he, he, I don't think it's ever used on a member of VCW. Makabe saw it coming, reversed it to a Makabe lock with the seated position. Henson now reversing it into a cross face of Scott. And look at him, pounding away. The forearms to the shoulder blade neck area and now uh, look at the torque as he leans back and you can see every time he leans back Makabe's body is wrenched upwards bending in the wrong direction but Makabe did break the hold by getting to the ropes there. And that was actually, that, that's interesting because that is how Henson beat Makabe their match at the, uh, the All-Star uh, WrestlePlex anniversary, the first one back in 2003. Henson sort of did a kind of an amalgamation of his own crossface using the uh, the chicken wing element of Makabe's uh, Makabe lock and really torquing on after you know le leveling him with those forms but it didn't get the, jo the job done tonight. Both men back to their feet. Henson, Irish whip reversed into the ropes himself now. Makabe catches oh, him into a German suplex. That's a big guy to catch. I'm, sh I'm shocked he even managed no, normally in the past he's done that into a bridging suplex, but I'm not surprised that he didn't today because he's got to be tired at this point. At the weigh-ins, Henson was 222, 222 pounds. I think he's a bit heavier here at match time, so for a Maccabi to get him up and a John well, Whoa, reversed! He, I can't he, believe he sustained he, uh, the blow! He just absorbed that. And one of his own! What, look at the impact into the corner! Wow, that had to kill. Not just the kick, but look how Makabe hit that corner. He kicked him a halfway across the ring. Lariat reversed, and now... What the hell? Into a into pinfall. Into a pin combination. Two! No! Oh. I thought he had him. I thought he had him. I thought we were going to see Henson lose his hair. And Henson, you know, the arm that was grapevined by Makabe, he barely managed to squeak it out and get that shoulder up. Really, you know, we talked about how, how well these guys know each other. That's been the story of this match, just the series of counters and reversals. Yeah, right. And, you know, taking one man's move and finding the strength within you to just fight right back and hit him with something he's not expecting. The momentum swings in this match are back and forth. It is, it is quite the pendulum. The crowd's starting to get into this one. They, they really want to see Henson well, yeah, clearly. take the hair of Makabe, and they, they saw how close he was to losing his hair there a second ago. And the reaction that Daniel Makabe got at the beginning of this match, it, it's not like we're going to see a split for crowd favor in this one. No, he was that's, firmly that's booed. the reaction he tends to get. Yeah. He gets that reaction when he just walks into a store. Yeah, no, they, uh, they don't even like selling him eggs at the grocery store. Went for a trap keeper, backflips out to a Makabe lock attempt. Henson trying to fight it off, trying to break this no, no, no. waist lock no, no, no. here, and does into one of his own. That one broken up by Makabe. 
again here you see the familiarity between these two is neither man can really sustain any kind of a firm grip on one another. No, both guys going for maybe German suplexes, but they're, they keep reversing out of each other's waist locks. Henson dragging him back closer to the middle of the ring. Flips him around. He's got the double underhook whoa, here. Whoa, 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 for whoa, a trapper whoa. keeper? Yes, indeed! He hit his own move, that trapper keeper bomb, on him. He stole oh his God, finishing, dude. one of his finishing maneuvers. One, two, and no. Only two, though. Just getting out in time. Makabe, who now has felt what that move has done to opponents his entire career. As he's dragged into the middle of the ring, Henson points to the corner. Could wow. be going to the top rope here. He's not really known for going to do moves from the top rope, but you know, he just hit Makabe with his own trap here. Maybe he's going to go with Makabe's own senton. Well, we saw him hit a senton through the table on Special K in the match, which led to this match. Yeah, that, I mean, we haven't really talked about that. These guys were a team. They lost the match, which led to them, you know, facing each other, hair versus hair. And oh my goodness, we're going to see a superplex. Henson cut him, or Makabe cut him off, and Henson into the middle of the ring. What a superplex from the top rope. Both men feeling it. As you can see, Makabe clenching towards his small, the small of his back. Henson is down. Makabe rolls over one, two. That is oh not my enough. goodness! I can't believe he kicked out of that. But you know, Makabe really didn't get much of a cover because you could see how much that affected oh, yeah. him. Well, the sting, the shooting pain that would have been traveling up his back, the sacrifice that he put through his own body to deliver that move. And, and maybe he's going for the Maccabi lock. Maybe he's, you know, he's hit him with the high impact moves. And now he's going to try and, yeah, he and might submit be, him. He might be sensing there's an opportunity here to get him in his finishing hole. No, back suplex. Elbows from Henson. Break it up. Oh, a shot to the back. You could see the, the pain on Henson's face as he winced. Oh, back suplex back. reversed. One, two. Oh, he pulled the hair again. Oh. Only two. Only two. Hold the hair for that small package. And it would be Didn't a shame at this point to see Henson lose because of the cheating of Daniel Maccabi by pulling the hair. Oh, now he's going for that trapper keeper that Henson hit on him moments ago. Yeah, he's going to try to deliver one of his own. But Henson pushing the arm away, refusing to allow Maccabi to hit that move. Oh, cat's cradle. One, two. Oh, oh not enough. Not enough. A desperation-like maneuver there from Henson. The cat's cradle, as you put it, and he just about had a three count out of it. And it wouldn't surprise me at this stage of this match if we see something like that, a surprise maneuver like that, finish this match. If that's all it's really going to take. You know, we might see some big high-impact move. We might see a cradle. I mean, these guys have really gone all out at this point. We're, you know, 20 minutes in. Oh, my goodness. Enzi Lariato... The, the critical from behind, and he spiked Makabe's face into that mat by criticaling him in the back of the head. Just clubbed him in the neck, and now Makabe, though, has recovered quickly, and he's back up, and they're back to exchanging holds here. Look at the reversals. Oh, 2K6? He's got him up on his shoulders. He's looking for it. No. Nope. Can't. And oh, back suplex back from suplex. Makabe. Rolls him over. Full lateral press. He kicked, no. out, he kicked out a one. Yeah, it was only a one count. How did he kick out a one after all that he's taken? Take that, jerk. Wow. I I, I mean, the heart, the will to win here from Scott Hansen cannot be talked about enough. Another oh! big back suplex. That was a real high angle one. You know, that last one was kind of a quick, snappy one. That was more of the, the Jumbo Saruta style back suplex that Maccabi likes to throw two. out. Oh. oh, he kicked out at two. And look at the dismay on the face of Daniel Maccabi. He can't believe it. And, and after, you know, he, the way he covered him there, both knees across the shoulders, all his weight, and Henson still found a way to kick out. Makabe has got to just be wondering here. His mind must be racing. What does he have to do? Oh, here's the Makabe lock. Yeah, he's looking for we it. We haven't seen him lock it in yet. And he's got it. 
right in the center of the ring. Can Henson get to the ropes? Because, I mean, if he can't, I can't see how he's going to get out of this. Henson's hair is on the line. He must get to the ropes or find a way to break the Makabe lock or he will lose his locks, his locks of hair. As he does roll through, oh, but, but holding on is Makabe. Delivering elbows now to the neck and the shoulder region. Trying to soften him up, possibly for another Makabe lock. Boy, we just about saw history there. But somehow again, Henson, that will to win. Oh, he's going back to those elbows. I, I think he is going to soften him up and try and go back to that I Makabe lock. I think out. There was a look there. His eyes glazed over, and I think he's out. Wow, two. I think he's out. That's it. Look at the look. No. Oh. Somehow he's fired back up. That look, that glazed over look, I thought for sure we saw the last of Henson in this match. Again, going back to work with those oh. elbows. But look at the punches to the solar plexus. He's fighting back. Up onto the shoulders now of Henson. Maybe that but 2K he's still fighting. I think he's going to hit that 2K6. Look at this. Henson trying to fight through these elbows. Maccabe's wore himself out here. What? What is this? Oh! oh! There's that high impact move we talked about earlier. The fans losing their minds. Maccabe's possibly losing this match. Oh! No, not enough. Not enough. Taking that 2K6, which is that, uh, you know, it's a fireman's carry, and he swings him over almost to, into an Emerald Frosian. Th this time, swings him into like a tombstone pile driver kind of thing. I can't believe it's the first time I've ever seen this move, and Maccabi managed to kick out of it somehow. Don't give him and now back up to the top rope. Henson, possibly. We saw him trying to go for the... He went for the U Sunk the World. Which yeah, he, he earlier has, in the he match. He has never hit on anyone in VCW. Whoa, and Makabe doesn't want to be the first one to eat it. What? Nope, reverses it up. Nope. Oh, is he? Nope, swings around. Again, back to the re reversals here. The familiarity between these two. Oh! Wow. You the know, angle of which Makabe landed there, the full force of the move on the back of the head and neck, reverberating now through the spinal cord of Scott Henson. This match is over. He doesn't. Maybe he, he doesn't think so. Makabe's lining him up. He, I think he's going for that senton. Well, this might just be overkill at this point. It, it could be overkill, or it could just be kill. It could be. It could be. It could be it the end of the could match. Could be kill. Makabe to the top. Senton, oh, full and, impact. And he hit him. Oh, and hence, did he hit him in the face? I think he did. Henson, that woke him up almost. Well, I, I think that pissed Henson off. And now Henson put, puts him right back. Look, Henson sees blood. I think he, this, I, the, I, this might be the first time Henson's seen his own blood in a match. He may have broken his nose there. He is going back to that move he was trying to hit in the first place. I do think we can see some blood on the face there of... Scott Henson. Henson not known to use that You Sunk the World on fellow VCW members because it, he thinks it's too cruel. You know, he instead uses it just to to take out, you know, uh, any uh, out, outside challengers. But maybe he's going to make an exception for Daniel Makabe. He may have just broken his nose there. So At I this can't, point. I can't say I blame him. No, exactly. Could it be coming? Could it be You Sunk the World? And. Oh! He hits it! And look. No, no, not only has he never hit it on anyone in VCW, no one has ever kicked out of this move. But can he get over to make a cover? He does. One, two. two. No, he kicked out. Wow. And now look at the look on Henson's I, face. I thought Daniel Makabe was Henson's his pissed. Head. Oh, he is Henson is pissed. There goes those elbow pads. There goes those arm protectors. Here comes a critical. Oh, oh my it's over. God, that's it. One, two. Three. Oh. And Daniel Makabe will lose his hair as Scott Henson wins what can be classified as nothing short of a war wow. with Daniel Makabe. What a match. What a win for Scott Henson. Classic battle between these two. And you know, Henson really, he just, he toughed it out. He And he earned winning Daniel Makabe's hair. He earned the, the right to that cut that hair. That will to win.
And now we see the locks being cut off of the, the head of Daniel Makabe. And you know, fans everywhere enjoy watching him be humiliated in the ring. And, and you know, it, you know, people say, "Well, hair, who, you know, it doesn't hurt. Who cares? You lose your hair. identity. It's your identity. It's humiliation. The fact that you know th this guy, this rival of yours, another man, is the one who gets hair. gets to cut it and just Look leave, at this. leave it all laying in the yeah, ring. And you can see Maccabi. It looks like he's almost got tears in his eyes. The embarrassment that he is suffering. Look at him. He's wow. He may never be the same again. Look at all the hair. He's on the floor. Henson. Oh. And, well, he he's called he, him back into the ring. He's got some words for him. Good. Good. <laughs> well, we talked about it earlier, that he only shakes the hands of people he respects. He extends the hand, but can he be trusted at this point? I guess he can. And after a match like the one we just saw, how can he not respect Scott Hansen? All this. Two years since I've had a fucking haircut. Two goddamn years. And it's not even... All because of a, a whiteboard, a goddamn white. It's not even. What? Where did it even go? Was it all a dream? Is this is this the Bob Newhart show? Am I? Am I? What is this? Who, who even did this? The tag match? My fucking hair? I didn't even hear about a whiteboard until like three weeks ago and now, and now, and now, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh.